subtraction of mixed numbers with the same denominator and borrowing. These are the ones people sometimes have trouble with when you have to do the borrowing. So again, I'm going to rewrite this first one this way. 6 and 4 ninths minus 4 and 7 ninths. Now, the times you have to borrow when you subtract is when your top fraction is smaller than your bottom fraction. Because if I subtract, I have to try to take 7 away from 4. Well, I can't take 7 away from 4. I don't have enough on the top. So what we end up doing is having to borrow 1 from our whole number. I'm going to borrow 1, which makes the 6 a 5. But when I borrow that 1, I want to think of it like I did that circle the other day. I want to be in ninths. 1 would be equal to 9 ninths. So when I go over here, when I borrowed my 1, I'm going to add 9 ninths to my 4 ninths. 9 plus 4 would give me 13 ninths. If you think about 13 ninths as a mixed number, 13 ninths would be 1 and 4 ninths. Now I can go ahead and do my subtraction because now I can take 7 away from 13. 13 minus 7 is going to give me 6 ninths. Now we always know we want our fractions in simplest form, so again we'd want to reduce it down. Those are both divisible by 3, so that's going to give me 2 thirds. Then I can go back over here and subtract my whole numbers. This one I changed to 5. 5 minus 4 is 1, so I'm going to get 1 and 2 thirds. Again, if you wanted to check it with your calculator, you'd do it just like we did the ones where we were adding, hitting the fraction button between your whole number and the fraction. So 6 fraction 4 fraction ninths minus 4 fraction 7 fraction ninths. And I get 1 and 2 thirds. So if I look at number 11, I'm going to take 7 and 1 ninth, and I'm going to subtract 3 and 7 ninths. Fortunately, my computer wasn't very creative, and I'm in ninths again. <laughs> but the same kind of thing. I can't take 7 away from 1. So if I'm going to take, try to subtract here, I'm going to end up borrowing. I'm going to borrow 1 from the 7, which would make it 6. And then I'm going to add the 1 to my fraction in terms of ninths, since my denominator is in ninths. So I'm going to add 9 ninths to my fraction, which makes it 10 ninths. And now I can subtract. 10 ninths minus 7 ninths would be 3 ninths, right? And 3 ninths can be reduced. 3 ninths would reduce down to 1 over 3, 1 third. Then subtracting the whole numbers, 6 minus 3 is 3, so 3 and 1 third is going to be my answer. So, 12, they changed the denominator. Let's see if you can figure that one out. Go ahead and give it a try.
Got your answer? What you get? Three and four fifths. Three and four fifths. Good. That's what I got too. <laughs> Here, when I borrow one from my five, I have to add ten tenths because that's the unit I'm working with. So one tenth plus ten tenths is eleven tenths. Eleven minus three would be eight tenths. I'll write it over here. Eight tenths can be reduced down, so we would have four fifths. And then the one, or the four minus one would be three. So we got three and four fifths, exactly.